EC. That's what we're going to go by tonight. Mm -hmm. So saves a lot of trouble for everyone, really. Time. <laughs> yep. We, we've we've got a very nice little podcast for you. Uh, we're going to kind of keep it light, not too um, not too rigid. Paul, is everything okay? Yeah, it should be fine. I'm just trying to get to move bot at this point. All right, I saw you groaning over there. I didn't know if we were having technical issues or anything. Yeah, so no, I just uh, forgot to change the title. That's all. <laughs> Discussion for tonight: We've got some Battlefield talk. We've got some Overwatch talk. We've got some Titanfall talk. We might talk a little bit about Call of Duty, even though mm -hmm. I don't think anyone here has played it. Um, mm -hmm. DC has brought some nice little gifts to give away. Um, do you, you want to show those to the audience? Um, uh, yeah, quick? sure. Uh, we have a Luchador bottle opener. It's your we Mexican have wrestler. Mexican wrestlers. We have a uh, tea bag holders for the British and or educated Americans amongst you. And then we have the uh, cat butt magnets, which are, of course, the favorite in this thing. So we'll figure something out. You guys can run that and we'll just send them off to whomsoever. Now, for, for those of uh, you out there... Um... Why, why don't you go into a little bit about who you are, what you've been doing online, and everything else? This is your chance to kind of plug yourself. Uh, well, that, does, um, that doesn't sound right. I don't mean to plug yeah. yourself literally, uh, uh, but cap, yeah, cap exactly. That's what those, <laughs> right. oh, go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm um, I'm basically been gaming for Christ, I don't even know how long. Uh, as as soon as my dad shoved a, an Atari controller into my hand, really, uh, I'm 40 years old. I am a dad of four, and uh, I have enjoyed the Battlefield series. I, uh, my roots are in COD, and, uh, and I transferred into Battlefield. And now I'm running a channel which is very sporadic at the moment. Hopefully, we'll, uh, towards the uh, beginning of next year, we'll start becoming more regular streamer. Um, and basically, I'm about passing the love through. I've had a lot of good luck in my life, and I like to try and pass all of that through with some giveaways and helping other channels out, people who are you know, maybe a bit down on their luck or whatever, and they're just streaming to try and help themselves out. And you know, That's kind of what my, my angle is, really. And we'll get a, like we'll get a link uh, passed out on that, too. Absolutely. It seems yeah. like lately also you've kind of uh, you've been doing a lot of charity stuff too, helping out uh, GoFundMe sites and everything like that, which um, it's a very noble thing as well. I know um, there's a lot of people out there that have been down on their luck and, um, you know, medical issues and everything else. So you, you've kind of been bouncing around sites and uh, passing uh, people's stuff around as needed, which yeah. I, I really, I really commend, uh, commend you for that. That's, that's oh, a very that's good thing. So um you said you started off uh with call of duty um before jumping to battlefield I, i'm kind of similar i started with uh battlefield 1942 and then kind of veered away from that after college 360 came out and i got into the whole call of duty thing and then after rage quitting one day um during modern warfare <laughs> 3 i went back to battlefield uh battlefield 3 and that's how i wound up there um so why did you leave call of duty um, well, I was part of a, a, a clan at the time, and uh, we were um, very much together and enjoying stuff. And then what happened was the the, the powers that be in their uh, infinite wisdom decided to switch from dedicated servers to non-dedicated servers. And oh, yeah. that caused a shitstorm of uh, unimaginable proportions. Uh, certainly, it fractured, completely destroyed our community. Uh, um, we were all very annoyed about it because basically from then on you had no power you had no kick admin rights you had nothing like that and uh we just we hosted the server for a while and they just came in flux with cheaters and whatnot and there was nothing you could do about it um and uh it just became completely pointless so we just canned it and i at that point had just stumbled across uh it was just at the point that bad company 2 was released and um, I stumbled across it and said, hey, guys, you know, maybe we should try this out. It looks like a decent game. It's got squad element and we can have our own servers and whatnot. And um, some played it, didn't enjoy it. I think most of them, what they didn't enjoy was the long spawn times compared to Call of Duty. So it's a, what is it, a 15 second spawn time in Battlefield, I think. Yeah, right, right. Then, dying and just starting right back up again. Yeah. Immediately. Kind of exactly. like Titanfall is right now. 
Yeah, exactly. So so it was just a question of it's not really our bag. We want a bit more immediate action. And I kind of stuck with bad company too and then got involved with British Sergeant's Mess and the rest, as they say, is histoire. So, yeah. so I, I, I know that I'm kind of of the younger crowd in here being all of 35. Um, <laughs> but one of my earliest systems that I had wasn't really a system. It was Commodore 64. Did either of you have Commodore 64 back in the day? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, yep. And I had an Atari. Uh, oh, it wasn't a, it was a computer. It wasn't a, uh, it wasn't the console. It was actually a computer. I can't remember what it was. Though. But uh, yeah, that was cool. I used to play Zork. Zork. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was your favorite Commodore game? Oh, God. I don't even know. I used to love Chucky Egg. Do you remember Chucky Egg? C64? Uh, I do not. Chucky Egg, man. Oh, that's, that's going. I was probably 8, 9, 10, so you would have been 4, so probably a bit before your time. But A, a Commodore 64 game I had, which you would probably know more about than any of the uh, other American crowd out here, was Trap Door. Um, do you remember? It, w- it was a British series. Uh, I think it was Claymation, actually. It was like this big blue blob maybe someone out there remembers the trap door but it was a tv show and they made it into a game and um we got the commodore right when we moved back to the states from england we had been there for three years uh while my dad was stationed there so uh, that's one game i played and then hunt for red october um not hunt for red october red storm rising and you red you storm probably rising, remember that yeah. game uh fun uh mm-hmm. one of, one of my favorite at the time. submarine simulators yeah although at the time the last thing on my mind was being on a submarine but yeah. I think at that point I was maybe twelve. Yeah, I, I see. Uh, I see the, the peanut gallery out there saying casual talk about ancient games. That's <laughs> these are classics. Stonehenge. These are Stonehenge. classics. Yeah, exactly. The so, ones I remember. Right. The ones I remember was Skate or Die and uh, Burger Time. Burger Time. Mm-hmm. I remember yep. Burger Time. Yep. That's what I, I had on there. It was yeah, a simpler was. time when you didn't worry about FPS or your That's graphics right. card or frame drops or anything like that. It was just you pushed the thing in and off you went, and that was it. It was brilliant. Yeah, exactly. You were just you happy heard. that you had 8 bit color and it sounded and you had sound. Yeah. Cartridge plug, games. Plug, in, plug in up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA select start, and off you go with your 30 yeah. lives. So. Yeah, yeah, that old stuff. Yeah. Of course, now you can either just mod it or uh, tell the game that you want that many lives and you're good to go so all right moving moving away from ancient games i know i know people want to talk about battlefield one which is first up today so um what what do we want to start with hmm i know you two have a disagreement on something i'm, I'm trying to remember what it is it's, it's, the, medic <laughs> it's the medic class isn't it i see now okay so you you've, you've <laughs> basically mugged me in here now you're gonna let loose go on then go yeah on. The, the medic class. Class. i think it's mainly it's mainly the weapons i think yeah, the weapons, our, yeah. So you, you very, we both agree revives and heal are important all right, all right, DC, since you're the guest, I'm going to let you go ahead and state what you think about the medic class and the weapons within. Oh, geez. Um, where do I start? Okay, so I have a feeling that the medic class is being ignored massively um, because it doesn't have a high fire rate gun, basically. And I know that sounds probably a little bit churlish, but here's the thing. The majority well, of gamers... Did you just say churlish? God, that's so that's so British. I love it. I love it. No, that's, that's I, I occasionally say things like lackadaisical as well and get laughed at. So don't worry about it. Very, um, very, very loquacious. <laughs> loquacious. Ever, thank you. Yes. Um, um, I I think that the medic class has suffered because there aren't those high fire rate guns, and particularly in TDM and domination where things are a bit more close quarters, you you the only thing you've got that's really good in terms of auto fire and up close is the um m1907 is it the not the shotgun what's it called paul the um uh, the trench whatever yeah, it is I, I don't i don't but it's, I it's don't, a full auto one but yeah, but you can't it. do anything at distance really with it because it's far too bouncy and i think people aren't interested in that particularly when you've got other classes like assault and support which do have high fire rate guns or at least fully automatic guns you know support they have a slightly bigger mag uh the auto uh, guns are ridiculously fast and very effective hip firing 
and I think if you're up close and personal, which the map seems to be a very disparate use of very close and very open areas. And oftentimes you get spawned in very far away from the up close areas. And I mean, one of Pun's argument is, well, they, they're a medium engagement, medium engagement gun because you should be at medium engagement. The problem with that is that a lot of the flags are in and around houses or the objective is where the players are going. So the contacts and engagements are quite up close. And you as a medic go in there with a gun that is uh, essentially a DMR and they aren't all that accurate. And um, particularly when you've got snipers that can take you out with one shot and the uh, Automatico guns that the assault class has, it's, I think that the, the gap is too far for the more casual player, which is, let's face it, where the game seems to be heading at the moment. Um, it's it's too too difficult or, or to, it's too involved for them to worry about picking it up and learning how to use it properly. So they just want to go around a gun. So they automatically go for a class which is fully automatic and has the guns that they're used to from previous iterations. That's basically what it comes down to for me. So I'll, uh, you you brought up <laughs> you brought up some things very near and dear to my heart, like uh, the support class. But before we get to that. Um, We'll get Pun's take on this because I know uh, his line of thinking with the meta class is pre pretty much counter to what you're saying right now. So, Pun, Pun, give us your insight into the meta class and uh, let, let us know where DC's wrong. Oh well, from your point of view, from your point of view, the first the first uh, thing that I remember him arguing about was his that was the accuracy of the guns, and uh, to me, I think they're probably. Out of the three uh, regular classes, I'm not counting Scout. This most they're the most accurate guns in the game. I mean, my own stats even say that because I am averaging forty percent accuracy with these guns. And I mean, I take. Can, can I just ask? Are you a DMR? Are you a DMR enthusiast from BF4? No, I've never played DMRs. This is the first time I've ever done it. Uh, most of my uh, guns in BF4 were the uh, automatic assault rifles, so and the carbines. So I know, <laughs> like I said, this and it, it, it's a weird situation with BF1 because I'm playing totally opposite what I've played in any other battlefield game. I primarily play uh, scout and medic now, uh, the cause, and you know I would have never thought that I would ever play sniper because it's just not the way I play. Um, and I try to play now as aggressive as possible, but I feel that snipers and medics are just really easy to play to me. And I, like I said, I'm averaging some guns are 30 in the mid 30s. Some of them are around 40 percent. And uh, I have pretty, really good success. Even in close quarters, I seem to be having really good success. Uh, I just think I just happen to find the gun that I like and that's what I stick with. And that's usually that's the Rigotti optical setup. I really like running with that. All right. So, so I'm going to give my view on this, um, and what, what I think it comes down to is, and pun as much as I hate to say this, you're a good player. You're, you're a better player than I am, and I think what it boils down to, the meta class has become a class for players that just flat out have better aim and accuracy as a whole. For me personally, in previous games, Battlefield 4, Battlefield 3, the Assault class, <clears throat> the Medic class, was my go-to class. You could use carbines, you got the Assault Rifles, um, and I viewed it very much as a beginner class. That that first class everyone gravitates to while they're learning the game. Um, that, that I don't feel is the case anymore. I feel with these quote unquote DMRs, which I, I don't like calling them that because they're they're very much just semi auto auto rifles from the World War One era era, you have to have good aim with them. And if you don't, you're gonna get eaten alive by everyone out there that has better aim or a different weapon. And for me it just doesn't work, which is why I've really gravitated towards the for me, the assault class, which I play the assault class a lot in Battlefield Four. I love the Pechenegg, but even those weapons, to me, they're they're basically pea shooters. The accuracy is off, and when I don't play assault, I, or uh, excuse me, support, I find myself going to either assault because I love the shotguns, or recon, which by far the weapons are just 
the sniper weapons are too easy to use. I mean, yeah. you look at Battlefield 3 where you had to have skill. I mean, there was bullet drop. You had to, you know, you had the little tick marks on your reticle. You had to determine how far out you were going. You had to adjust accordingly. And it might take you a few shots to, you know, to nail someone. But here, you know, I'm pulling off shots and I'm just like, wow, I feel like I'm an awesome sniper when in reality, I know I'm not an awesome sniper because like I said, my aim at first person shooters like this, just it's average at best, maybe, maybe a little above average, but you know, I, I feel uh, they've gotten away from the whole medic slash assault, which I know they split off now, which I don't agree with, but you know, the, the medic class very much should be that class where beginners come in. There should be weapons that they're comfortable with. Uh, that they can do decent enough with. I mean, you shouldn't be able to excel above, you know, a skilled player, but you should be able to fit in comfortably. And personally, yeah. I think they need to add the whole shotgun. They, they they need to add shotguns to the medic class because that would take care of what you were saying, DC, with, with the ability to have a weapon yeah. when you go in there to try and heal people. You've got something that you can use up close. Because when when I'm playing medic, I find myself, you know, up there in the middle of things with a gas mask on most of the time getting gunned down because I can't even see to use use the DMR. And the spool up time as well to, to the the weapon changeover seems slower. And if you've got a gas mask, I mean there's comments in the in the thing about gas masks and you can't ADS when you've got a gas mask on. That's my that big makes, argument. That's no, my what, argument. You should or you shouldn't. You should not I don't like the fact that you can't aim aim down sight with your gas mask on. Drives me crazy. I, su I suppose it's real. It's realistic to a certain degree. I suppose yeah. because if you got one of those things on, but yeah, yeah I think the problem is I, I've done it before. Firing with a gas mask is not easy. I mean, I mean, you can aim down sights with it, but it's not something I would want to do in a close uh, close quarters situation. Yeah. You're better off just you know hip firing. Exactly, and that's that's part of the issue is that that you've got those guys who are coming in with the automatic weapons. They bung in a gas cylinder. Uh, gas grenade sorry it goes off and you've got to chuck your gas mask on and suddenly you're getting laid waste to because you're trying to res people you're trying to res people and you're just getting shot to pieces because you've got nothing you can't ads you've got a slow firing weapon which even even the um the automatic version of the the um medic gun is still very slow firing compared to mm -hmm. any of the support weapons and it, especially the automatico um Shotguns, I would like a shotgun to be added to the medic. I do think it needs a carbine s weapon. But the thing about shotguns at the moment, they're a bit bored. To be honest, they're they're they haven't. Shotguns have always been a bugbear of mine. I will I will say that. But they have, I think, once again, not quite got the damage model right. It seems you can shoot someone one shot from miles away, but then someone stands right next to you and it takes four shots to kill them. It, it just, yeah. I don't know. I think the problem. I, I'm also looking at this, you've got to remember, from a hardcore point of view, I'm more a hardcore player than I've ever been a softcore player. Sorry, normal mode player. And I do look at it a lot in that light. But at the same time, you know, it's a 60 hertz server, not a 100 or 80, which I've been more used to. Um, and I think this, you know, there are pings all over the place and so on and whatnot. So we're making a lot of very broad judgments on a very early iteration of the game, which needs, it does need tempered with that. But I do think nonetheless, people aren't playing Medic because they don't have an automatic gun that can compete up close with the support guns or the assault guns. And I think it, that's really what it comes down to. I, I kind of agree on that. And, you know, it's, a, it's interesting you bring up weapons and, you know, many, many, many months ago, before we knew that Battlefield 1 was gonna be World War One. I said, you know, they'll they'll never go World War One. They'll never do that. It just doesn't make sense. The warfare was, you know, it was trench warfare. The weapons were slow. They were older. And um, while, while I'm glad that they had proved me wrong and they did go with World War One, I, I think it's very neat. I think we're starting to see some of the issues that go along with choosing World War One, in that there just weren't a lot of weapons back then like there are now. Um, and, and I think that mm. goes... Do you, do, have you researched how many guns there were? There were a lot of guns, but there wasn't a lot of similarity between them. I, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of one-offs, like the, uh, the Hewitt. I mean, I yeah. think they wound up producing three or four of them total. They never made it to the battlefield. I mean, they're... 
I, I know what you're saying. There, there were tons of guns. I don't want to make it sound mm. like there are only ten guns. That no, no, from. yeah. I, sorry, I wasn't. Start, I wasn't trying yeah, no, to correct. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. And I, I know there were tons of guns out there. Um, but as far as differences and modularity and being at, able to add your Picatinny rails and everything, it, it's a different era with with obvious restrictions. You're in the infancy of modern warfare, the infancy of modernized mm. weaponry. So. Um, yeah, there are, there are a lot of different weird weapons and random weapons. I mean, I'm, I'm sure some crazy person even ran, ar ran around with a blunderbuss out there. Um, I'm, I'm sure it was done. I guarantee you. I know, I know there was a guy who stormed the Normandy beaches with a claymore. <laughs> yeah. They're, no, they're, like a claymore, know. a claymore sword, not a claymore. Yeah, they're, they're, well, there, there's that crazy Colonel or whatever, uh, Colonel Jack or whatever, who's charging with the, with the sword and everything else. But, um, you know, I, I think this goes into more of uh, along the lines of what you were saying earlier. It's it's gone kind of casual and has kind of that that battlefront feeling to it, just because of the lack of weapon diversity. As in, you know, your full auto, your semi auto. You've got your M4, your M4 mod, your M14, everything else. So I, I don't know if that's playing a huge issue or not. So I think BF1 as a concept is a massive sea change from BF4. Very and the, you know, the, the, in BF4, we were very spoiled for choice. And the interesting thing about BF4 is that I found maybe three guns in the entire cavalcade of weaponry that was available to us. I stuck to maybe three guns. Yeah. I used a carbine. I, I used the SG553. Um, and then occasionally I used the SCAR. And then I went to the F2000. And that was it. That was me done. And yeah. I, I, you know, I potted between two, you know, two or three other weapons, but those were the ones that I stayed with. So in a way, it seems a bit, um, I don't know, weird that I'm arguing for more guns or whatever when I stuck to those three. But I think also it's going to be very interesting with the DLC with potentially new factions coming along, whether that will introduce new guns. You know, I think I, I have a suspicion that DICE are going to be telling a story throughout the DLCs, uh, the progression of BF, uh, sorry, the progression of World War One, and as such, we will see more uh, experimental stuff coming in and different weapons cross classes. So I think that'll be interesting to see. It's, it's um, interesting though that you bring up the progression though, because we've kind of jumped into the very end of the war. Uh, I mean, tanks didn't come out mm -hmm. until the the very last year or so. The Hellfighters got on the ground mm -hmm. in the, uh, the last couple of years, so it, it's like we've jumped in towards the very end. And obviously they had to do that so they could get the weapons in there. And again, I'm kind of, I'm sorry, I, I'm forgetting that this game is not based on historical accuracy and we can't look at it that way. Obviously, um, concessions had to be made to make the game enjoyable because obviously the tanks weren't that fast either. I, I think they were basically walking speed back then. Um, so obviously it's it's not historically accurate, but yeah, I, I agree with you though. You you've got the Russian faction that hasn't been added. You've got the French. You've got weapons like the the Mosin Nagant, uh, which you know it, it's a favorite from many. Which you know I own one. I want to see it in the game. So yeah, def definitely there's room to grow, and they can add a lot. But I, I noticed someone in there, you know, say, say, "Yay, I'm not the only one that thinks it's Battlefront." Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't mean that it is Battlefront, but it it it, no. it does feel though like Battlefront was the inspiration for the game in my in my mind. When you look at things like sniping, I mean, what what was that one unlock card with that 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 pulse rifle or whatever that was a one shot kill, which yeah. basically fired in a straight line? I mean, that that's that's how sniping is. It's like they took the sniping from Battlefront, imported it to Battlefield One. I mean, the graphics is beautiful. It's like Battle, Battlefront. I, the, Battlefront really seems like it was the the basis for this game more than Battlefield Three was or Battlefield Four was. And may, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm talking out of my ass. Go ahead. You all can tell me uh, what you think. Am I wrong? Am I, am I imagining things? Well, I don't think that. I don't. I can see why you're you're you're. You're you want you're uh, saying that they're the same in terms of sniper guns. I, I well, not not there the same. Is just not, simi similarities. There, there there are a lot of similarities between this and battle. There are more similarities between this and Battlefront, in my opinion, than this and Battlefield Four. Well, I think when you look oh, at yeah. the UI, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could 
the UI is a lot of, a lot like Battlefront uh, because of you know them using the Frostbite three with the updated lighting and textures. It looks a lot like Battlefront. Uh, I don't think the game. I don't think the gunplay feels like Battlefront at all. I think the gunplay is pretty unique, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, it doesn't even feel like Battlefield three or Battlefield four. You know, so I. It's in. Yeah, it's a comment actually. It's just come up. It says um, Bullseye said, "I think if I had to make yeah. it more casual than BF4, so a bit more like Battlefront, because they knew predicted the player base would increase, so people." I saw, I saw that exact across. same thing. Yeah, it, it's almost I, like this is a reintroduction to battle. You know, it's, it's yeah, yeah. I think I, uh, I think they. It, it's I think at the moment, the aggravation largely stems from, and I, I, I'm. This is probably speaking a little out of school, but. I feel very strongly that a large amount of the aggravation is coming from the fact that PC players feel that they have paid a lot of money for cards and all the rest of it, and they're playing a console game now. Yeah. And that yeah. that irks a lot of people. And I think, you know, Bullseye is saying, you know, exactly right. It's been, I don't like to use the word dumbed down, but let's say pared down to a more simple level where it's a lot, a lot simpler to pick up and play than BF4. And the BF4 was still a pick up and play game, but it had a lot more, it felt a lot more tactical than at the moment BF1 does. And yeah. I know we're at early doors and people are finding their feet and doing the challenges and, you know, don't get me started on the challenges, but the the, the thing <laughs> oh, is that the people, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, you know, we, we went in a great length about having to choose medals and how we. Yeah, uh, that's a pain. Yeah. Me, but. So I think I think there's definitely a um, an attempt to win cod players over. I mean, you, you talk about the introduction of celebrities, and we had one of the most um, high profiles uh, cod guy in in White Seventh Street or White Boy Seventh Street or whatever his name is. He he um, was brought into the fold, so to speak, um, and with the intense purpose of dragging cod players from cod into into Battlefield. You, you know, that, think... that's that's part of the problem, though. I, I mean, ba Battlefield is not COD, and it shouldn't it shouldn't be trying to fight COD. I mean, obviously, you can try to outperform it sales-wise. Any company wants to do that. But you shouldn't label yourself as the next COD. You're Battlefield. Mm -hmm. There's a reason people love Battlefield. There's a reason people love COD. They're, very, they're two very different game styles, two very different play styles that, you know... I could find myself going back to COD if another game like Black Ops came out that I really enjoyed. I, I don't hate the series, but it's a different type of game style. It's more fast paced. You, you've got those rapid spawns. You know, you can die, get back in there, and you're in the action again. Um, mm. So I, I don't think they should be trying to beat COD or be the next COD. They need to just be Battlefield, but a Battlefield for everyone, I guess. I think, uh... yeah. If I'm not mistaken, Andrew Wilson made the comment that they finally realized that they can't be Call of Duty because they were just really two separate games. Now, whether they follow on that with action is a different story, but they at least acknowledged that they can't compete with Call of Duty because they're really not the same. So hopefully they'll try not to continue to do that. I think they're, I think they're trying to do that with Titanfall 2, which we'll get into here in a little bit. But Yes, yes, uh, we will. Um, and before we move on to those... Um, Another thing that was brought up that I do want to touch on, and the very first thing, uh, DC, that you brought up, um, and one of the reasons you left COD, you mentioned the servers. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that that has been a huge, huge argument from day mm -hmm. one. I know there was fear that they weren't going to have servers uh, the way we wanted them. There's going to be fear that kick ban wasn't going to be there, which I, ha have they implemented that yet even? I, I don't think they have, have they? So I think that, it's going to come they with haven't... a patch. So I think that yeah, they they have said they've said a raft of stuff, and then there's stuff which they've said just trust us. To, so to, to me, that sounds like they had no intentions of doing it. They were going Battlefront style again, and I think the public outcry, which good on them for listening to public outcry, it, it was mm. just too great for them to ignore. Um, I I don't think, I mean, there were people ready to basically leave the series over the whole server options which you know when you mention communities it <clears throat> it can break an entire community you need those options you need the ability to filter chat ban people when they're acting like three-year-olds throwing racial epithets or whatever out so um mm -hmm. i i don't know why it wasn't implemented from day one i think you're right i think you're absolutely right i think there was there was a 
you know, we're going to do it this way. And then they realized they had caused a bit of a problem and they were losing, going to lose massive numbers. And w- uh, the thing is, do, how much can you apportion to a stable launch? And how much can you apportion to maybe going one way and switching halfway through? That I think that that's a, you know, that's one of those things where you say, well, you know, you having having private servers doesn't affect a stable launch. So, you know, it's, launches are on are, are on servers, and then people talk about bugs and stuff. But the problem, I, can I just address this? Is one of the biggest problems I have is people going on about, oh, I can't believe they didn't pick this up and pick that up and pick the other up. And you have to remember that the QA department of Dice is tiny compared to the number mm-hmm. of people playing yeah. Battlefield. And if you just do simple maths, I mean, someone said the other day, oh, this, I think it was Pool Shark said, though, you know, I saw things saying that 79,000 people uh, at peak time today were playing Battlefield 1. They're already saying the series is dead. But if you take the number 79,000 and times it by one hour, that's 79,000 hours of someone finding a bug. And people forget that. And if you play for five or six hours a day and there are hundreds of other people playing it, it all adds up to finding things. So just to yeah. cut that that particular bit of the branch off. But in regards to servers, I certainly think there was a backtrack. I, I believe they're going to do the right thing. I think l- what Level Cap was saying in his videos, and I, I've said my piece, I've said my piece on those, um, nothing Me against too. the guy. I don't, I don't agree. I don't agree with his opinions. doesn't mean I don't like him, but I think his influence on that particular area, having a standardized battle, uh, battle field experience is a load of bollocks. And they took too much heed of that and not enough heed of, what actually is, you know, people always talk about mods making games. And I don't think we can ever mod Battlefield. And they've said flat out they're not going to allow it. Um, but having the option to run your own server how you like is as near as damn it as we're going to get. Mm-hmm. And to deny people that was a huge mistake. It was well, a huge it, mistake. It's, it's almost, uh, this, is, this is very ironic because it's almost like they didn't learn from actual World War One. When they did through did all this, because you know part of the problems with the uh, British military, World War One, was they were very pragmatic. They were entrenched in their ways, and you know they they thought what what we're doing is best because I'm the general and I know what I'm doing. And they didn't talk to the soldiers out there who told them, you know, you know this this isn't working right. You need to listen to us. So when they finally did later on in the war, they you know kind of changed their game plan. It's the same principle. I mean, you're listening to your quote unquote generals, the level caps out there, and they're going to have a completely different theory on how things should go than the actual average players, the you, the me, the, you know, the, the players that aren't even average, the players that aren't that great. You know, everybody's got a different view and you can't just listen to the people at the top. You got to get down there on the ground with, you know, the, the average players to get a feel for wh- the direction you need to go, because they're the ones that are going to tell you the truth, and they're going to give you a better baseline from the direction you need to head than you know a, a big name YouTuber. And again, not, nothing against him or anyone else. I mean, they're mm. great people, differing opinions, but they're going to tell what they want based upon their own play style and not the play style of everyone else. So it's my theory on that. And mm. the the issue that I had is the fact that they have never hosted a server. Level Cap's never had a server before. I didn't actually know that. Well, I didn't didn't know that either. No. Well, so they're taking advice from... I don't want to throw, you know, Level Cap under the fire here and throw him under the bus. I I know we just... But it's common, though, because everybody that's complaining about the servers are the guys that never rent them. I mean, that's really what it comes mm. down to. They're the guys that have not admin servers. You will not see a person that has hosted a server for a community complain about the fact that of you know there's bad admins and there's a, a, a you know rule sets that are just outrageous. I, you know, I am of the mindset that people should be able to run the servers the way they want it because they're paying harder and money to have them. And if you mm. don't like it, then don't play it. Let the community figure out what servers money. are good and bad. Yeah, absolutely. And I think speaking of hard-earned money being paid over this, the system, the payment system they've got Man, like lined it. out, that I, I feel that's a very, 
very strange system to, mm. to be generous with my words there. Well, it's going um, to it's going to keep people from wanting to run small servers because they're not getting any mon their money's worth out of it. I don't you, understand you know, where, where, why they decided that? to stay away from going, you know, renting by slot instead of uh, giving a flat price to a server. It just makes no sense to me. You know, we're we're, we're at the point now where to purchase a full game, you're you're not looking at your sixty dollars anymore. You're looking at sixty dollars to get the base plus you're going forty dollars or fifty dollars on top of that for everything else i mean honestly things are starting to get really really expensive game wise i mean for for those out there that aren't, aren't fortunate and um, you know to have a high paying job or anything else you know it can get very expensive and i i don't know if a lot of the market's being priced out at this point um, and, and that's why you see vanilla maps always being the most popular. And I, I think really Titanfall got it right, you know, by, by including DLC and everything else and games like Overwatch where they're, they're including the DLC. I mean, I, I understand, you know, I believe me, I was an economics major. It's not cheap making games, mm -hmm. especially big games. It, you have to pay for employees. You're paying hours you know, there's man hours going to it, everything else. But I, I, it's almost like we're getting at the point, though, where I mean, it's, it's becoming very, very expensive to play a full game. So, um, I don't know. I just, I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to being able to rent a server, and I fully intend on doing it. Because, I, you know, I was going to do a 64-slot server anyway. But... For those guys that wanted to rent a small server, I feel bad for them because they're really not getting any money. They're paying more money than what they were going to do for third party. And I really mm. hate the fact that, you know, Battlef Battlefield or EA put out, you know, how much uh, customer service, how much better customer service is going to be with them by third party hosting, which I have to disagree because I, for one, had to deal with with GameServers.com and Nitrato on a first-hand basis with our servers. And they provided great mm -hmm. customer service, and they provided a ton of information on how to admin the servers with their uh, hosting commands, how to use their UI, and all that stuff, in addition to being able to use Procon, which they don't even own. So I, you, you know, you know we're, we're, we're talking about Call of Duty earlier, um, how there were you know, no personal servers or anything. It, it was all... Um, you know, their way or the highway. I, I really think that if if you're using your own bandwidth to host the server, they should damn near be paying you to do that because you're alleviating bandwidth off of their stuff mm -hmm. and doing it yourself. So I, I don't think I don't think the prices they want are really. I don't know. I, I I've never run a server for Battlefield at least, um, so I really can't. Um, bitch or moan about it really I guess I don't have a right but well, just no, everyone has a right you... you still have a right yeah. to complain about it it's yeah. like when you buy a car you buy a car you buy a basic car it has four wheels four deals or a hatchback or whatever and, and an engine and it goes and you expect that but then you might want to say actually I want a DVD player instead of a radio or I want a digital radio instead of a standard radio and I want uh, my seats to be grey instead of green you have lots of options and you should yeah. have those options because exactly. it is ultimately your car yeah. and whether or not you know, EA have set a you know set a, a, a set of parameters there that they want to confine people to. That's fine. But then Ali Hassoun was talking about um, from Dice. He was talking about uh, hardcore, and he's saying, well, we're going to make health 100%, but bullet bullet damage 140% by default. Why did why change this? Why is it being changed? It doesn't make any sense to me. You've got things that are being just are, it seems arbitrarily changed and why what, what what does it actually achieve i mean if you've got hardcore people expect 60 percent health and 100 percent bullet damage because then grenades do more damage fire does more damage all the other tertiary stuff to bullets does the same you know proportional amount of damage mm -hmm. if you have 100 percent health and grenades do 100 percent damage there's nothing different except for the bullets and they're still only causing 40 percent more damage I, I mean it just it seems a bit odd that they've kind of made some arbitrary decisions which they could have just said do you know what health at 60 percent 
bullets at a hundred, you know, hundred percent, everything else is fine. Why tweak with things that cause unnecessary problems down the line? It just no, I, it I seems agree. odd. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, so yeah, we've spent a lot of time on Battlefield. <laughs> Even though we thought we covered everything there was to cover two weeks ago about Battlefield, it's like there's always more stuff coming up. So mm-hmm. um, I, I do want to move on to Titanfall 2, though, because that, that's a huge release. Um, and honestly, as of late, I find myself playing Titanfall 2 more than Battlefield 1. And just for me, I guess the reason why is, um, you know... It, it seems like you're always upgrading in that game. There's always stuff being thrown at you, new unlocks for weapons, all that stuff that we hated in Battlefield 4 and find ourselves missing in Battlefield 1. It's getting thrown your way. But personally, I, I just think they did, Respawn did a phenomenal job with Titanfall 2. Oh, yeah. The the, the freaking campaign was awesome. Uh, the multiplayer is it's fun. Um, and, and I really think EA dropped the ball on the release. I know they've come up with excuse after excuse after excuse why they had to release it then. No, you damn well didn't have to release it then. You can <laughs> hold off to Christmas. No. You know, hold off till Christmas. Get away from Call of Duty. You know, let Battlefield 1 get in there more. To me, that was not a wise business choice. And looking at it from an economic and a business point of view, it was st- Stupid. They've got a great game on their hands, one that I think could compete with Call of Duty, um, both in esports and everything else, and they just completely loved it. So yep. um, you both have played it. What are your thoughts on it? DC, let's start with you. I think your mic went out. Yeah, you, you went out a second. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, we're seeing lag. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, now. Okay, sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I was just typing something to um to pun. So you you uh, to pun start, and I'll I'll type this, and then I'll come in with my thoughts. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, I am absolutely in love with the game. I th- I'm like you, Sean. I think the campaign. It's fantastic, well written. Hmm. My only problem with it is it's too short. I wish it. I wish there was a, another four or five hours of gameplay in the campaign. Um, that but that, I that think, seems to be the way they're going now, though. I mean, yeah. even even Battlefield One has a short camp. I, I mean, all the campaigns are short. If you're, well, and again, that's you got to divert your time between building a multiplayer game and a campaign. But no, go ahead. Yeah, but I mean, in terms of the story, I think, uh, I mean, yeah, it's pretty um, predictable, but I think the gameplay is good. I think there's some quirky, the quirky lines between BT and the pilot are fantastic. I love it. Uh, I think the gameplay overall in terms of being able to teach you all the different uh, things that you need to learn in the game, I mean, it's all there in the campaign. Um, and it provides you a great um, opportunity to use all the different guns. Uh, meanwhile, it just has a great story, and I like it. Plus, on top of that, it's the game is one of the smoothest in terms of movement, fluidity of movement of, of, I've ever seen. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. They they uh, nailed it. They they absolutely um, nailed it. It's interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, there was a I, I, I presume I don't know if pun your father. Yes. Sean, you're yeah, a father? I Am I sure oh, yeah. I'm a father? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> have you have you watched uh, Big Hero Six? Yeah, I have it. not. I heard it's fantastic. You I, have I not seen Big Hero it. Six? No. It's an no. amazing film. Oh, amazing my film. gosh. The reason the reason so I good. bring it up because as soon as I started playing the whole Titanfall campaign, mm-hmm. I had an absolute certainty that it was gonna end similarly and i don't want to give too much away now because yeah yeah don't don't like, watch no, it no 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 bt dies don't watch yeah, uh, don't. Uh, it's all well it's all well it, it you know in the film baymax goes in a very similar manner and yeah. i thought at the end i thought this was always going to happen but I think the, the key about things like these games is creating a bond between you 
it's it's a very apocryphal thing, but to keep to create a bond between you and the character that you're supposed to have a bond with in the story. And did it do that successfully to a degree? Yes. Was I particularly bothered when it happened? No. Um, it is, after all, a game. But it was beautifully handled, yeah. is the way I think I would put it. It is very hard in a game to, ha- to grow a connection between you <laughs> and who you're playing or who you're playing with. And I, I think really the only other game that I can recall that I actually really cared about the character I was was probably Halo. I mean, Mas- Master Chief, you when you're playing Master Chief, I, I and again, it's a game. So, you know, either way, I'm, I'm not going to cry. I've never cried over a video game. But, you know, Master Chief and the Halo, they did a great job of the campaign. It's yeah. engrossing. You care mm-hmm. about what happens. Um, and... Uh, I, I feel that this game just did a really good job in the same way for the amount I played. I haven't got to the end yet, though. I'm I'm like three fourths of the way there, but yeah. no, they, they just did a great job. And mo- moving on to the multiplayer, also, I mean, um, someone mentioned the hit hit red registration in there and everything. Um, you know, that's something that's still an issue with Battlefield yeah. One. I'm still getting killed around corners. Oh, yeah. um, but that is not an issue in Titanfall. Where I shoot in Titanfall, um, you know, the bullets go. I don't get shot around corners, and, you know, that's probably because it's only, what, six on six, eight on eight, um, a, a lot less going on. And, and I think that's Smaller what, maps, et cetera. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but, but it, no, I, I just really enjoy the game. It just did a phenomenal job with it. I, I hate that it's not doing well right now. And I hate that when I try and play some of the game modes, I can't find a game because not a lot of people are playing it. And, and, and again, that goes back to them just dropping the... I, I think <laughs> nothing to do with the game. Let me put that out. No. For everybody watching, the fact that Titanfall 2 is not doing well has nothing to do with the game itself. No, it purely lies on the lap of EA and how they release the freaking game. If, if you look can I can game, I just interrupt just a yeah, second? Everyone is crying about spoilers and the the game's been out for ages. Fuck off! I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what, are we talk, are we about, what, what are we talking about here? Halo or uh... no? The, no, no, the, no, the, the Titanfall Two campaign about what happens uh, with yeah. BT. Yeah, they're the same well, group that watches sure. Walking never, Dead never... and doesn't want anybody saying it on Twitter. Yeah, yeah Glenn dies. Hours, all right, Glenn hours. dies. Glenn gets a bat to the head, and you know why? I know that I've known it for the past five years. That issue in the comics <laughs> came out five years ago. Yeah. So I've been waiting for I this moment. I didn't realize that was going to happen. Yeah, I've been waiting for this moment <laughs> for five years. So, no. Um, yeah, we, we still don't know what happened. So, it, it's probably like one of those Terminator 2 endings when he's going in the lava and puts up the yeah. stone. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> there you go. Um, mm. any rate, yeah, they, great job. Um you know, I, I know we've been on 50 minutes now, and uh, I know it's very late for you. So I, I want to move on to uh, Overwatch real quick because I know a lot of people still play Overwatch. I play Overwatch. Big news: we finally know who Sombra is. Um, oh yeah. DC, DC, what are your views on Sombra? What do you think from what you've seen? Do you know what? I haven't actually seen yet. You haven't seen I'm, it. I, no, I've been busy engaging in BF1 and TF2, and I've left Overwatch alone because I. I want to come back to it and and see the new things and enjoy them for what they are. I haven't really been on board with the new characters and the changes. Um, I have watched some of the videos on YouTube, but I my problem is I'm a binge watcher. So if I watch one episode, I have to watch them all. I you know the new series of Archer came out, and rather than being clever and saying I'll do one every week or say no, watch them all that night, I can't do it. And I, I'm just, I'm enjoying the stories. I'm enjoying the development. And I think they've done, Blizzard does such an amazing job with drawing you in with yes. those little microcosms yep. of, of relationships between the characters. And you think, Jesus, this is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And then you play the game. You think people die when you shoot them. You know, it's fun. The community around it seems to be a lot less aggravated than COD or indeed Battlefield. Oh, God, yeah. It just seems, you know, it just seems like everyone's enjoying the game because it's lighthearted and fun and mm-hmm. and you can also invest in the characters as well because they've got this whole backstory going on. It's just, it's just a brilliant achievement of modern day 
story involvement and game crafting. And I think they need an absolute bucket full of, of, of applause for that. They, yeah. they bring characters to life. That's exactly yeah. what they're doing. They're bringing their characters to life. I mean, um, you know, from Tracer to Winston to just all of them. I mean, they, they come off as believable. They, co they, they come off as, I mean, they, they could damn well make a movie out of Overwatch. And, they and, should. and I would watch it. Yeah, oh, I would they watch should. My CG goodness. or whatever. I'd watch a CG movie or whatever else. I mean, yeah. And that's what Blizzard excels at, though. They, they've done a phenomenal job on that. Um, uh, Pond, I'll go to you because I know you have uh, seen Sombra and watched yeah. her, you know. Boop. Um, yep. <laughs> I love that. That's an archer but, thing through and through. I love it. I, I absolutely love that. It's, it's, boop. Um, what, what do you think about Sombra? What do you think she's going to add to the gameplay? Um. Well, I think she's going to add a lot, and I think that she's going to be quite difficult to deal with. I mean, she has a lot of different abilities that she can do. I mean, she can hack. She can the EMP that she can do. I mean, that wrecks everything. She can turn. It's a, a game she, changer. It is a game changer. If, yeah. if you employ if you employ her correctly, you can turn the tides. Uh, uh, the Gone are the days where you can set up a couple Chorborn uh, turrets and just lay back there and create a defensive wall. Get your PO the great play of their game for a Chorborn card. Yeah, so. exactly. That that is no longer going to work. I mean, well, is that an about, ultimate? That EMP. Yeah, what, the that? EMP. The is EMP is her ult. Yeah, the big yep, EMPs right. are ult. It takes down shields. It does everything. So, like you think about Reinhardt pushing with his shield, she throws EMP. His shield goes away. So, I mean, so basically, it, it's going to require timing. Um, it's going to require teamwork. But, you know, imagine you've got your Lucio. He's got his all ready. He slams down his little sonar pulse gun thing. Everybody's got their heal. Um, she does her EMP. The shields go down, and you just freaking bum rush the, the cap, and there you go. I mean, it, it adds so much. So, But, again... How how is having another Sombra on the other team going to work? Is is she going to be able to counter Sombra? You you know there's there's things we don't know yet, but yeah. I, I love the addition. I you know the the character's quirky. It's fun. You know you've got this uh, this Latina character. You, you know the whole boop. Um, she's again, uh, uh, she's really good close quarters too. Her guns are fantastic, absolutely fantastic. I mean, my son's played her a lot more than me. Charlie plays her ton of time. He loves her. Is, is the update in the with game? Tracer up close? Yep, she can handle Tracer up close. She's a good counter for Tracer, I would think. Is it so she's she's actually in the uh the full game now? No 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 she's still PTR from what okay, I understand. So, I okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. What would be do you know what would be cool is if her ult could reset everyone else's ult for like five or six seconds. That yeah, would be cool. Know that but, would but be then, it nullifies health and stuff, though. But before we knew about her uh, her EMP ult, I was hoping they're going to employ her in a way where she could hack like a turret and turn it against the enemy team or something like that. That would have been a neat way to go also. Um, but yeah. no, I, I kind of like the EMP, too, just bringing down shields. Um, I, I guess it brings down uh, Reinhardt's shield as well. Will that... Mm -hmm. uh, but, okay, any so anything... Yeah, that that that's a game changer right there. That yeah. that is very very smooth. Um, do we do we want to do a giveaway right now? Sure. Yeah, we can do um, that. Punch, do you get my message? I cannot see it for some reason. I don't know why. I've got. I've got and I can't two... bring it. Type it in the uh, type it in the uh, podcast chat. If I bring up your specific one, it's going to drop all the cameras. Mm. I say you have two codes, but I can't. I can't bring yeah, it. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I was saying, basically. Okay. <laughs> the cat's but, yeah, out the The cat's out yeah. the <laughs> Wait, wait to be discreet, pun. Wait yeah, to be sorry. discreet. So, so what do we got? What do we? Yeah. <laughs> what do we got going on? All right, go, go ahead and tell us. Uh, basically, I've got two Titanfall two codes codes to give away, and obviously on top of the cat butt magnets um so i think if we do a raffle probably for one code first and then we'll do the the little silly prizes and then we can top and tail it with the tft codes it's christmas time christmas in november right now uh so um fun you want to get you want to spin up the uh raffle get that going and uh 
I guess yep. we'll just do rapid fire. Cause it's, we're at- it's li- yeah, it's it's live right now, so we'll give it a minute. Everybody, get in there if you want Titanfall two. Go ahead and uh, and this is for PC, correct? Uh, correct. It's the deluxe edition for PC. Okay, so yeah, go ahead and uh, do exclamation point there, raffle. There's, there's and- no ifs about it. You want Titanfall two? Trust yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Great game. Awesome stuff. So um, yeah, if you've already got it, don't don't enter. Yeah, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Go yeah. go for the cat butts. You know you want the go cat butts. Go for cat butts. butts. Dude, I Love want those cat butts. butts. These are some high quality cat butts. You probably can't see them, but there we go. Look at those cat butts. That is quite something, isn't it? Yeah, we, we got two of those damn things running around our house. I see enough cat butts as it is. <laughs> see, uh, there's not details in there. Um, <laughs> boop. There we go. Uh, there we go. There we go. I, I, there I love now. that. Love that. Um, and, and you know, really, and going back to the whole boop and bringing characters to life thing, that, that was one of the coolest things about PAX when I went to PAX. I mean, Overwatch had a great ground, mm-hmm. ground game. They had, you know, they hired stunt people to uh, dress up as the characters from the game. Uh, they, they, they got with Uber. Uber was driving uh, Lamborghinis around. Uh, you know, I, I got lucky. I got a ride with Tracer in a Lamborghini. Um, Blizzard just does yeah. it right. They know. They know. <laughs> they know. They know how to market. Blizzard knows yeah. how to market. They should be a model for everyone out there. Um, really, they do a phenomenal job. So, uh, well, and on top of that, you get a forty dollars game, and everything else comes with it for free. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can buy true. battle packs and for microtransactions, but I mean. You know, you get all the maps. God only knows I've uh, spent a fair amount of money on those. But, um, (laughs) yeah, you you can spend as little as you want on it. Um, 40 bucks and you've got the whole game, uh, which is really seen. Have you seen Angel's um, Angel's little emoji, boop emoji? Oh, I see that now. That is awesome. (laughs) I like that. Nice. I like that. I like That's pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, we, we, we ready to draw right now? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and draw now. So, guys, right, we're ready to pull it. Who's getting it? Drum roll. Who, who does Moobot select? Angel! <laughs> <laughs> how, how random is that? <laughs> well done, Angel. Nice. Congratulations, Angel. You have Titanfall 2. Yeah, very good. I bet you've already got it. Have you already got it, Angel? Let us know if you've already got it, because we can roll again. Yeah. I feel like I should be breaking into some sort of Sinatra show with this uh, with some Yeah, I, whiskey. I my, uh, my beer. I'm drinking a pumpkin spice, which, of course, turns me bright red. I don't do spices yeah. as well. So. Got to get that. Got to get those autumn, autumn tastes in while you can. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Or uh, winter gets here. So um, what, what, what do you want to give away next? Uh, I don't know. Why don't wasn't one of the chat chat decide? Your danger clause right now. Uh, danger clause is giving away more stuff. He's got a Lucador bottle opener, which is really cool. He's got some cat butts. Um, he had something else uh, as well. Um, uh, yeah, so the fisherman tea. I don't know if you can see it because I'm typing, but fisherman tea bag holders. They're actually really cool. They sit on the edge of your cup, for, and then you the put the refined, string from your tea bag. For, for, for the more refined uh, gamer. Yeah. Out- <laughs> More yeah. civilized. Hey, do, do you have do you have one of your plushies nearby just to show everyone? I don't. You know they haven't they arrived haven't yet. Been? They, they oh. are. They haven't yeah. finished them quite yet. But when they get here, I are. Uh, I'm I'm just so excited for them. I am so excited because they look amazing and they're big as well. They're like um I think like a foot long. So are they really? It's a foot a foot foot long. Yeah, foot long. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I let me get my measuring stick out, yeah. ladies. Um, but. Uh, yeah, they're like a foot long. So you get a, you get a hefty cow for your money. Um, so it's 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 good. And I got like I don't even know how many of them. I got a lot basically. I think five hundred of them. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I think uh, everybody's talking about the cat butts. Um, let's do the cat butts. I want to see those cat butts go. Uh, okay, let's do the cat butts. So hang on, let me let me just message Angel in the morning. Um, show show you the tea sipper out there. He's a he's a Texas tea sip. Um, yeah, he wants the he wants the fisherman tea bag holder. Do we have any University of Texas fans out there? The Texas tea tea sips. Yeah. Angel, can you um can you can you get me on can you DM me on Twitter, please, just so I can DM you the code for time for, please. 
All right, so we're ready to draw for the cat butts. All right. G cat cat butt. <laughs> there you go, gun hand. Uh, the cat gun, butts. gun hand has some cat butts. <laughs> Congratulations. Stare at those, stare at those there you go. Long. Magnetic cat butts to stick on your fridge and amuse your friends and family. No end. Put, put them um, on the back just, of your vehicle, anywhere. Yeah, you, if you just tweet me, my Twitter's below my name. Tweet me, uh, DM me, because my DMs are open. So just DM me, uh, and I'll uh, I'll get those sent off to you. Um, now, we, what do you want to do? Tea Fisherman or Luchador? Bottle opener. Oh. T, T this this is a very popular option. This is this is you know, but these everyone wants this. Everyone, wants, I've got two, but I'm not only I'm only doing one in this stream. Let's go with the T first, and we'll do the Lucador and finish up with that last Titanfall. And uh... yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So, so here we go. Shogun, I'm gunning for you here. Yeah, you we're gunning this. for you, Show. I know you're you're a refined individual. This is a well-deserved <laughs> winner. He was, he was the first one in there. <laughs> this is a well-deserved winner that I know does a lot for the community. Punk, uh, the the raffle is for a. He sits at the corner of your tea, balances, and he holds your tea in the cup. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Look, uh, I can see if we can get a picture up for you. There you go. So you've got the little tea bag string going onto his hook and he just sits on the edge of your cup. I mean, how refined is that, though, to have a, a chap fishing in your tea? It's lovely, isn't it? Punk, it you're, is you're Australian, so you're, you're a less refined uh, British person uh, since your <laughs> island was... <laughs> yeah, what, 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 was the, uh, what was that uh, crime penalty uh, back in the day? It was... Uh, not traveling. Um, what, what was being the term sent to it? Australia, wasn't it? Well, yeah, but there was an actual term for it. Um, it wasn't traveling. It was transportation. That's what it was. Uh, uh, you're yeah. convicted in uh, transportation. So, um, <laughs> yeah, Punk wants that now too. He's like, uh, did, everyone knows how to get in the raffle, right? Exclamation point raffle. Um, yeah. So right, this is about, going to be. Let's say yeah, you got about was... 20, 20 more seconds to get yeah. in this. Because I know it's, uh, it's what, 1 a.m. where you're at right now? DC? No, it's fine, man. I'm good. I'm fine. You're, you're, a, you're a night owl, aren't you? No, I'm, I'm, I'm actually all good. I, I get second winds. I'm a night owl. I'm, I'm horrible in the mornings, but I can go pretty much all night. All right. Yeah. All right, let's see who the winner of this is. All right, let's draw it. <laughs> There you go, punk poet. <laughs> nice. Punk poet has won Where's the fisherman. That? Yeah. <laughs> so give me a give me a shout, punk in the uh, in the in my DMs. Just give me a shout with your address That's and stuff, awesome. and I'll send those out to you. Mm -hmm. uh, who won the Who won the cat butts? That was Phase Graphics. Ah, oh, Phase. Yeah. If you could if you could DM me, Phase just helps me out a little bit there. Um, so now we've got the luchador. The luchador. Yes. Luchador bottle opener. I amuse your friends, be the talk of the parties, especially if you happen to be at college or some sort. Nacho Libre. So I'm doing I'm doing I'm doing a I'm doing a hang on. I've got to do a um, DiCaprio Oscar Oscar moment. There you go. Right, I'll hold him like that. Before we before we draw okay, you, the cat butts went to um who Save. who got the cat butts? No, that went to um Oh crap! I'm looking. Hold on a second. I just totally drew a blank. I haven't. I'm pulling it back up in chat. Faye's got the uh, got the fisherman and no punk. Punk poet's got the punk poet's fisherman. got the fisherman and Faye's got, got the, the cat, uh, cat butts. Who, who got the cat butts? No, it was somebody Faze. else. Was it? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah, Faye's got the cats. Faye's got the cats, Angel got Titanfall 2, and uh, um, Punk, Punk, got, got the fish Punk appropriately got the, uh, coming in the last second, swooping in and getting, hey, what, what, what's this, what's this cheat what's thing? This, I'm, I'm this like, is crazy what? raffle, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works with raffles, though. You know, the, the last person to come in and put it in usually gets it. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Uh, so the Lucador, tw we'll go in about 20 seconds. We'll, we'll pull for the yep. awesome Mexican wrestler. Oh, I was Drew right. Gunhand got the cat butts. 
Gun hand got it. That's right. Yeah, Faye's got the Faye's got the fisherman, and Punk got the. No, Punk has got the. This this feels like who's on first? What's on second? <laughs> I knew gun hand is so one. Faze, I knew Faze like, actually I knew... has nothing. Faze has walked in here and gone. Poor, yeah, poor Faze is like, what did I win? <laughs> oh, nothing. Nothing He's at all. <laughs> the, the level, the professional level of standard on this I'm giveaway is you. just unseen. Unseen. Cutting uh, down it's... quick. Down quick. All right. Well, let's draw this, uh, this luchador. Uh, all right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is not right. Who got it? He's oh, drew it. He just won the <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm telling you, they're on my side. This is weird. He will get something. Oh take out, God. take out your lottery hey, ticket. Everyone, tonight. everyone say rigged. Everyone, everyone say rigged. rigged. Yep, hashtag rigged. <laughs> I swear to God, on. guys. Oh, oh, that's nice. awesome. All right. That's hilarious. Graduation phase. Okay, yeah. so just, just can we just clarify for the, the purposes of the delay on the chat, because they they got a bit of a delay going on here. So yeah. the cat butts was won by? Gun hand. Gun hand. Gun. The tea fisherman was won by? Punk Punk. Punk, Punk poets. poets. The luchador was won by phase. Faze. That was yes. phase, and we won't forget we won't forget that now. I won't yeah. forget that. Now we have the last Titanfall two. Bullseye right. phase did not win the cat butts. <laughs> <laughs> Bullseye. Oh, <laughs> Bullseye is confused. We'll just phase, clarify phase, it for you. In phase, about twenty seconds, everything phase, will be confused. Phase is confused yeah. like, so what have I won? Phase, you won a bottle opener, a Mexican wrestling bottle opener. Here you go, Faze. Look, let me show you. This is this is this is what you won. All right. Natural libre. A luchador. Natro libre. Natural libre. <laughs> Nacho cheese lay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Here am I, just appropriating the culture and making a gag out of it. Sorry, Lacey Green. You know, he's like, I thought I thought I got the tea fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> so this goes down as one of the biggest debacles of giveaways we've ever done. I love, love every moment of it. It has been hey, you got the luchador, okay? It's fine. <laughs> a recount. <laughs> Shogun wants a recount. Yeah, hang, hanging Chad, hey, right? I, I will say I have got another one of each of those things. Which I'll do in a in a stream of my own and anon, um, and I will go and get some more, and we can do some more giveaways. So don't worry, there's you know it's lots of time and yeah, Christmas. As, thing. as we open this right. last, uh, go ahead and open this last one up, and we'll let uh, we'll let uh, DC go on and uh, tell everyone where to go from here. All right, so I'll go ahead and do the drawing now. Okay. <laughs> or when, where, where, when. Um, no. Real quick for everybody that maybe has just joined in, we're getting ready to give away a Titanfall 2 PC Deluxe key. So if you have not entered the drawing, hashtag raffle within the next 10 seconds, please. Okay, so where where I where I am is twitch.tv forward slash Sergeant Danger Cow. Um, but most of the people in chat, I think, probably know that. Yeah. Probably so. so probably, probably so. I'm kind well, of big... well, when we slap the yeah, I'm kind of a big <laughs> deal around here. Um, when when, when we six. slap this up on YouTube, you know, it's good for people to know if they actually sit through and watch the entire hour and ten minute podcast. Which got to be dedicated to do that. I, I know I have a short attention span, so. Yeah. Um, All right, let's wait, 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 What's what's going on? We we got some hashtag raffle. We got a hashtag. Uh, no, they're, just, they're being trolling. Exclamation mark. What, what is hashtag raffle? Yeah, it's <laughs> raffle, raffle culture. Yeah. Yeah. Exclamation, raffle point. exclamation point. Exclamation point raffle. Don't let these people yeah. try and deter you. Trying to rig the damn you thing. Naughty, naughty people. They're, they're naughty. Narwhal, you're better than that. So no, right, phase... here we go. Here we go. Hang on a minute. Phase doesn't want that. Okay, right. Okay. Fine. Oh, I'm gonna draw again because the person that won it says they don't want it. No, right. no, no. He's he's talking about Titanfall two. Ignore him. Phase is Phase is happy. We just no, no, no. Do... I'm not talking about Phase. I'm talking about Shogun. 
Oh, Shogun okay. Hard hit. Shogun, Shogun won. He, he didn't get the cheat. No, he right. went tenter. He, he wants to play. And I'm not giving that one to him because they already have it. That's really weird. I am pulling up a lot of the same names. Okay. So this one is a new one. <laughs> Upside down question point. There you question go. Mark. I'm not even trying it. Claps button. Claps button. Double up seven four. I hear nothing. I'll pay the feedback guy for the title. It's too late, Joe. Give away to someone else. If I if I change, I'll change my fisherman to the code if I win. I bet you didn't. Claps button. I, I bet you didn't realize that T Fisher man was going to be that popular, did you? Yeah. Seriously, people are weird, man. People are I, weird. I, I, I will get a load. I, it's, do you know what these actually come from? My local garden center. Um, oh, nice. I went out with the wife. I, you know, we did a bit of pottering pre Christmas things. Uh, the stocking presents were up there, and I thought these would be brilliant for giveaways because they cost literally nothing, and well, not literally, figuratively, nothing. And uh, and they're perfect for giveaways because people love crazy shit like this. And look mm. what's happened. They all are going mad. Moo to everyone in there. So, um, yeah. cap, clap, stap, clap, 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 Spatten, yeah, what, what, whatever, um, whatever that is. Clap, spatten, clap, spatten, <laughs> 007, 004. Yep, that's. It, it sounds like a, uh, uh, new, a newly discovered STD or something. Clap, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, Um. So uh, if you can DM me, clap, spatten, uh, if you can DM me, my Twitter is down there under my name. If you can DM me, and I'm, you know, I. Don't need to follow you. You can just DM me and DM me your. Um, oh, there it is. So I shovel in German. Shovel in German. Well, there shovel. You there you go. I is learned, it? I learned something. That's new what today. it means. I did not know. I, I love the German language. It's like you. It's they say like sixteen vowels, and uh, and a couple of consonants, and the word has to be no less than six syllables long, and it means if. You know, I mean, it's just, I oh, love it's, that. It's a, it's a great language. Yeah, I was in Germany, just last, hilarious. In Germany last year. It's absolutely yeah. brilliant. Of, uh, oh, great people over there, too. Um, it's great and they say things the right way, grammatically, which I like. I appreciate that in the language. In the English language, we don't. In the German language, they say it They say it um, like Yoda, which is the, the actual correct way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the reverse uh, tense or whatever mm. it is. No. Uh oh, bullseye! Bullseye's, bullseye's refuting that. He's saying that shuffle is uh, shovel. I honestly would I think, not I know. Think I I I want to look it up, but I fear for the sort of stroop waffle situation. So <laughs> I don't want to go down that. I don't want to go down that line. All right, um, so we've got everything given out. Um, yep. We, we covered Battlefield. We covered Overwatch, mm -hmm. Titanfall. We touched on Call of Duty in the very beginning. Um, I, I know that game has just come out. I haven't played it. I don't think any of us have. Um, I'm sure it's doing very well. Call of Duty always does very well, though. I, from what I heard, sales are down um, compared to what uh, last year's was, and it seems like that's the going trend. Um, they're, they're, is, they're not doing good online, at least not for PC. PC is terrible. Yeah, I, I think we're at the terrible. point where we want more from our games and we want variety. So, at any rate, I, I know we have gone long. Um, Sergeant Danger Cal, thank you for coming out. We we really enjoyed this. Uh, a lot of fun. Um, just, just a great time. So, th thank you for coming on again. And, uh, you know, thank you for all you do for the Battlefield community. Um, yep. You bring a lot of joy and happiness to people out there, which is what it's about. Um, you also do a lot of philanthropy and help people out there in need which is also um a model that we should all live by so thank you for that as well um but i am no, really you. glad that you came on tonight so um yeah, well, thank you for asking me it's been a been a good time i've enjoyed it very much one yeah. last time I, i'm pretty sure you all know how to follow him on there are you streaming after this or is that uh, i am not i will be going to bed because my children will be awake in approximately five hours well, there we go. We don't want to keep you up any longer than go to bed. Um, again, Thank guys, thanks for coming out, watching DRMB Podcast. We'll be on in uh, the coming weeks with more. We'll try and have other guests on, try and bring in some more interesting and wonderful people. Thank you all again, and we are out.
real quick let me give a quick plug iKiwi we provided all the images for the background on the podcast we appreciate that what? if you are interested I, in no. doing that if you're one of those guys that takes those cinematic uh, images for video games uh let me know we will feature them on the podcast uh next podcast will feature shadow six so that is it guys y'all have a great one we appreciate you watching the podcast we'll see you out there on the battlefield bye bye